crafty people. Today I'm joined by Elijah who is showing us the jumper that I made for him for his fourth birthday the other week. <laughs> I find it really hard to find boys clothes that are bright yellow which is his favourite colour so I really love it when I can make clothes for him that are bright yellow. This is the second part in a series I'm making about kids clothes. The first part was how I cloned this pattern from a jumper he already owns. So if you haven't seen that video I really recommend you watch that first. It's linked in the description box down below. If you've already watched that video then welcome back. I'm glad that you're here to watch as I make this jumper and I hope you feel motivated to have a go at making one for yourself. This channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend and I'm really excited to share with you the making process of this jumper. So let's get making. My mum makes my jumper. I'm going to be making this jumper today using my very professional pattern which I cloned from Elijah's jumper here last week in last week's video. If you missed that you'll have to watch that next. I used the measurements in this jumper and was able to make my pattern from it and make the adjustments so that it would fit Elijah perfectly. So now that I have this pattern though, it didn't obviously come with instructions because I've traced it straight from an item of clothing. So I'm going to show you now how I work out what the instructions are for making this item of clothing even though I've only just got a paper pattern that I made on the back of my kids artwork. So to work out how I'm going to make this jumper I've turned it inside out so that I can see all of the seams and they are going to tell me the instructions so that I know what order to sew each part. Now when I look at the seam here I can see where the seams meet there is one seam here that's sticking up higher it's on top that means that it was sewed last so I know that between sewing the shirt front and the sleeve must have happened before sewing down the side seam because I can see the side seam happened last. Also, if I look down here where the jumper meets this ribbing at the bottom, I can see the ribbing was sewed on last, the seam is on top. That means that I'll need to sew the side seam before I sew the ribbing on. So it's as simple as that. That's the order of the steps that I need to do. And you can do this for any item of clothing. Turn it inside out, have a look at the seams, see which ones are on top, and that will help you to see what order things were put together in. First, I'm going to attach the sleeves to the body. Then I'm going to sew all the way down the sleeve and down the side of the body piece. And then I'm going to attach each of the cuffs and the ribbing at the bottom and the neckline. Let's do it. I'm lining the side of my pattern pieces up with the selvage on my material to make sure that the stretch is going across my jumper. I took a lot of time in placing my pattern pieces to make sure that the zebras were visible because it's such a large print on such a small item of clothing that I didn't want there to just be one upside down zebra or just a few zebra's bottoms or something like that. I wanted to be very particular about where the zebras were placed on his jumper. When I made this pattern, I had marked on there to say that I hadn't included seam allowance. So as you can see, I've added that as I've cut my fabric piece out. To cut the back of my jumper, I'm using the front piece to make sure that the front and back both have the same seam allowance, rather than using my pattern piece and having to guess the seam allowance on both of them. The neckline on the front piece of the jumper is smaller than the back, so I'm marking that on and cutting that out now. I'm remembering to fold my jumper in half so that I can make sure that both sides are even when I cut through. I use a safety pin on the front piece of the jumper so that I don't forget which side is the front. I'm placing the sleeve on my fabric so the stretch of the fabric is going across the sleeve and placing it carefully so a zebra is cut in the middle as well. This time I used pins, <laughs> who knew? I'm cutting around my first sleeve to make the second sleeve so that they're exactly the same. And I'm using a pin on the side that is the front of the sleeve so that I don't forget which side the front is when I'm going to sew them together because the front and back of these sleeves are slightly different. I do a dry run of how it looks when I put it all together to make sure that it's all fitting nicely. 
Then I decided to make some pockets. So to do that, I just traced out what I thought was a good pocket shape and I left an opening about 10 centimetres for the hand to go in. Very accurate, I'm sure. I wanted to make these pockets as big as possible, but I still needed to make sure that they met in the middle and weren't too large. Then I needed to cut four of these pocket bag pieces out, two for each pocket. I'm placing one of my pocket pieces on each side of the front of the jumper and using a tape measure to measure that they are in the exact same location on both sides. Then I'm pinning it in place ready to sew. The pockets are ready to be sewn on and I'm going to sew the sleeves at the same time. The front part of the sleeve is marked here using a pin and I'm going to pin that in place on the front of my jumper. I'm all ready to sew the two front sleeves and the two front pocket pieces. I'm going to use my stretch needle and I'm also going to set my machine on a stretch stitch. On some machines there's a little SS written in a section, they're your stretch stitches. Otherwise you can use a zigzag stitch or what I call the lightning stitch. And for me I'm going to use my fake overlocker stitch. So it's like a straight stitch with a zigzag next to it so it does both the straight and the overlocking on the edge at the same time. I checked my manual and it's actually called an over edge stitch and it's perfect for mid-weight knits and ribbing. So you could check your manual as well to see if you have a similar stitch. Otherwise, just use a standard zigzag stitch. It's not a good idea to use a straight stitch on a stretchy fabric like this because as the fabric stretches, a straight stitch will not stretch with it and it will snap. I'm opening up the pocket and pushing the seam to the pocket side and sewing it down. This is called understitching and it will keep your pocket flat. I find the easiest way to line the back of your jumper up so it matches the front is to just lie it directly on top. So I'm lying the back pieces of pocket on top of the front pieces and then the back panel of the jumper on top of that as well. Then I can pin the pockets in place knowing that they are going to match exactly with where the front pocket pieces are. I'm pinning the back panel of the jumper along the back parts of the sleeve and I'll be sewing these back panels of the sleeve and the back parts of the pockets in the same way that I sewed the front. This is what it looks like without pockets and this is how it looks once you've sewn all the pockets and sleeves together. If you don't have pockets, you would just start here at the sleeve, sew all the way down to this underarm seam, put your needle down and then sew down the side seam here. And if you do have pockets like mine, then you'll be doing that same thing, except we're also going to be sewing around the pocket bag. So we'll be starting here at the sleeve, sewing down the sleeve, putting our needle in to turn down this part of the side seam, then sewing around the pocket bag, and then the rest of the way down the side seam. So we, we're not sewing this portion here, we want it to stay left open so that we can get our hand in when we're done, and the same on the other side. When pinning the side together, I start with all the points that I want to be really accurately aligned with each other. I start by lining up the underarm seams, the top of the pocket bag, the bottom of the pocket bag, and the end of the sleeve. Then I can add extra pins in between those points so that the whole side is ready to sew. Go forwards and backwards at the beginning of your stitching to lock it in place. And when you get to a point where you need to turn a corner, put your needle down first before you turn your fabric. Turn 
your jumper in the right way, but leave your pockets inside. Then we are ready to start using our ribbing. To make the neck band, we're going to measure around the hole that's in the neck of our jumper. The neck band needs to be smaller than the hole it's going in, so I multiply the length by 0.85 to get the right length for my neck band, and then I divide that length by two because I'm cutting on the fold of the ribbing. I didn't cut my ribbing the right width, but don't worry, I'll work it out in a minute. Stitch the side of your ribbing closed to create a circle. Hold up a sec. Okay, two centimeters. Whoopsie. I originally cut my neckband 10 centimeters, which is what I need for the cuffs on the sleeves and for the bottom of the waistband. But now I've just chopped it in half and it's the right width now for the collar. I'm using a piece of ribbon as a bit of a fake tag, which I'm sewing on the neckline so that my kids can get dressed without me needing to show them which is the front or back of their clothing. I'm finding where each of the quarters are on my neckband and matching each of those quarters up with a quarter on the jumper. I pin these quarter markers in place so that when I sew around it, the neckband will be stretched evenly around the neck hole. Do a few little stitches and then put your needle down and then you'll need to stretch the ribbing out to that quarter marker point. You'll want to stretch the neckband so that it's lying flat against the whole of the neck. You don't want to be stretching the actual jumper material, just the band at the top so that it's equal and even with the fabric underneath. The cuffs of the sleeve I work out in the exact same way as the neckband. I measure around them and then multiply it by 0.85 to work out how long to make each cuff. Each cuff is five centimeters wide, so I'm cutting my fabric 10 centimeters because I need to fold it in half. I'm doing the exact same thing with the waistband as well, multiplying the length by 0.85 to get a nice tight waistband. Sew down the side of your waistband and of your cuffs to create circles. Flatten out your seams and fold your cuff in half and line up the raw edges of your cuff with the raw edge of your sleeve. Line the seam up on your cuff and on your sleeve and put a pin in place and then at the halfway point put another pin in place. I don't find it very easy to quarter small sleeves like this, but at least with the half points in place, I can stretch it a little bit to kind of get those center points, even if they're not exactly accurate. Then it is quite a fiddly job to sew the sleeves so that you're not sewing the bottom part of it shut. You need to sew a little bit at a time, put your needle down and shift the rest of the sleeve out of your way as you're sewing around the cuff. Remembering that you need to stretch the ribbing so that it's flat against the material on the bottom. Fold your waistband in half and then find each of the quarters and mark with a pin where the quarters are. Quarter your jumper as well and then match up those markings. 
I usually like having the seam from my waistband at the very back of the jumper. Then sew around it as we did for the other pieces. Now that it's completed, I'll show you what it looks like compared to the original jumper I cloned this pattern from, and I'll also show you how it looks when Elijah's wearing it. The video of Elijah wearing it is also a little sneak peek of the dress that I made for Isabel. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of me working out the instructions and then making this jumper for Elijah. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe. Next week, the video I'm making is all about my top 10 tips for making kids' clothes. So I'd really love for you to come back next week and watch that. If you subscribe, don't forget to click the little bell button next to it. That will give you a notification when that video goes live. I'd love for you to watch another of my videos after this. Check that this. I didn't wolf. I'd love for you to watch another of my videos after this. You can check the description box down below for some related videos. Until next time, get creative and we'll see you later. Bye! Bye.